Are we live? Hello and welcome to the first show of the nation's top luxury real estate check-in. My name is Melissa Porter and today we are talking property and opportunities. I'm your host for today's show and I'm joined by my six panellists who feature six of America's top luxury real estate experts. Now these guys are heavyweight combined. They have sold over $20 billion of real estate and they have over a hundred years of experience between them. So if, the, if they're not able to share the silver linings and the opportunity in the market, a game over. Okay, before I introduce my panel to you, I wanna welcome our interactive audience now. We currently have over 700 attendees on, on the line, or however virtually it's all operating. So I just wanna say welcome. So how this is gonna work is we're gonna start with 40 minutes of conversation with our panelists, and then it's over to the attendees, whereby we wanna answer any questions you have for the next 20 minutes. So please do message me with all of your questions and I can specifically direct them to whomever you wish. Okay, do remember to hashtag any social media so that you can join and continue to join this conversation after this webinar. And the hashtag is luxury real estate check-in. Okay, over to our panel. Let's start with the creator of today's show, Tim Davies from the Corcoran Group from the Hamptons. Now, Tim, you're a power broker with over $4 billion of sales across the Hamptons. And Tim ranks amongst the top 25 agents in volume across the USA. You have over 39 years experience, although you don't look a day over 39. And I'm excited for you to open our panel today with any reflections and an overview of the market situation for us, please. Uh, good morning, everyone, and, and thank you for joining. You know, this is a, is a very interesting time for us, and it, it's giving us an opportunity uh, to sort of pause in our life and uh, have a deeper understanding of what's important to us in our own lives. At the same time, uh, we are uh, challenged with dealing with those who are um, uh, having real issues with virus uh, in, our, in, our, uh, in our world. And uh, it's changed for us out here in the Hamptons with um, a lot of New Yorkers and people from um, around that area coming to the Hamptons, whether they have existing summer homes that they're taking occupancy of or they're renting homes uh, right away. Uh, so that they're, we've, we have had rentals that started as of March 1st uh, through, uh, through the end of May and then many that have, that have actually uh, gone through our season. Um, we are, uh, it's, it's a very interesting time. So I'm um, looking forward to talking more about that. Okay, Tim. So if you can, um, if you can share a little bit about um, any market opportunities that you see uh, um, un uncovering themselves. I would say that right now we are in, a, in our sales market, we're in a little bit of a pause, uh, though we, you know, our last year was, was, um, was, was quite good and we had a number of uh, we had record sales with oceanfront properties uh, in that quarter that, and they followed into the early part of this year uh, with several uh, oceanfront homes and uh, high-end properties that, have, that are in contract currently mostly with deals that started uh, at the end of the fourth quarter or you know in the fourth quarter of last year uh, and it perhaps finished off and were contracted in the in, in the early part of January or, or February and I and and as we as we sort of take a little bit of a pause in the sales market you know with getting people settled in their in their homes and and I think people are making decisions about where they want to be for the next three months or six months uh, the opportunities will 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 present themselves uh, we have uh, some good inventory though I'll say uh, if the inventory is down in our market um, from the last call of four or five years uh, but there'll certainly be opportunities out there. I think more importantly, buyers are focused and, and uh, those looking are focused on, at this point, 
a safe haven to get out of New York City, to be able to have a place that they can drive to rather than fly to, uh, and, and to be safe with their families. So um, the opportunities yeah. will, will present themselves later in the season, more likely June and July. Mm -hmm. And the media is reporting doom and gloom in the industry and in the marketplace. Um, and, and with 39 years of experience in the industry, this isn't the first time that you've seen economically this situation arise. Can you um, give any insights in what, what follows a situation such as this crisis we're, we're, we're all experiencing? Uh, you know, I, I, I sort of equated a little bit to what happened after 9-11 and, and in, in similar fashion, you know, there were those who made a decision that, uh, that they will leave the city and move to a place where they can have, uh, have a safe haven. You know, in this day of technology, one can work from almost anywhere and uh, that, that possibility presents itself to one making it a, a, a decision about lifestyle versus uh, having to be in an office, you know, five, six, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Um, I've been asked to repeat the hashtag for everybody. So if anybody's involved, um, getting involved via social media, please include the um, hashtag as part of your conversation, luxury real estate check-in. Um, we've got increased numbers of people checking checking in and we're now over 750 attendees so thank you tim who um we have just spoken to now if we can move to miami jill hertzberg from the jill's azida group coldwell banker miami beach south florida voted best realtor in the south florida real estate market having closed over four billions in sales including the sale of the Versace mansion. Now, Jill, these are unprecedented, stressful times for the entire world. And as a leader in your industry, um, you'll be focused on the opportunity. Can you share some insight with our audience, please? Well, thank you um, for having us all on today. Um, I want you to know I'm part of a team. It's three families. We're the Jill Zeter team. And um, we cover from an area called Coconut Grove, Coral Gables, up to Golden Beach, Miami Beach. So we're in the mainland and we're on the beach. Um, Miami Beach, which I'm primarily talking about, is an area that's only seven miles long, and it's from the bay to the Atlantic Ocean. And the population is about a million people. So here, what we've had, which has been amazing, is you know, different areas come into our city because it becomes popular with South America. As South America had problems. Now, for the last couple of years, it's really been people from Tax White, from a lot of the people up here, from New York, Chicago, California, and these areas in Connecticut that are coming down here because we don't have the state income tax. So what, what Tim said is exactly what I repeat, is that we were having a very strong year last year, as everyone was, and this first quarter was great. The housing market is not what got hurt. It was an epidemic for worldwide. So I feel like it's a stop, and it's a serious stop, and I'm, you know, I wish it didn't happen, but it did. But I, it wasn't against the housing market or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that as things pick up and people become more mobile and social again, and maybe a vaccine or something like that, that same impetus of people moving to our city will continue. Um, and if it does continue, what I think is gonna happen sort of worldwide is their markets, their real estate markets, hopefully will return to where they were. I don't think that they're gonna, you know, the prices are gonna fly up. I think price is gonna be a really big um, motivator for people, but I think people will continue to come into the city and the things are priced right for what they are. There's going to be opportunities for the buyers and for the sellers. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing, Jill, is the key opportunity is if you are selling your property to price it right. Price is always, you know, we say here, cash, you know, everyone loves cash, but pricing has a lot of friends. And it's really important, I think, in any market, 
if you're very unique and there's nothing like you, like Tim was talking about an oceanfront property, you know, you can mm -hmm. price accordingly. But when there's, you know, a lot in your line in a building, then you have to price mm -hmm. accordingly. You have to pay attention. And there will be opportunity. There will be great opportunity. And I think that this whole epidemic has made people, including us, realize how important your home is and mm -hmm. what you like about it, what don't you like about it. If you don't want a home, it's too much responsibility. You want to be an apartment or vice versa. You don't want to be an apartment. You want to have a backyard and be at home. So I think mm -hmm. that people will have much more direction and purpose in what they're buying. Mm -hmm. And Jill, when, when do you think the market, do you, do you, you're well established in the Miami market. When do you think the market will be restored back to original levels? Do you have any, any insight into that? No, I'm probably doing what everyone's doing, which is watching every news channel, you know, going from Fox to CNN, because you get both sides mm -hmm. of the world all the time and listening to everyone that's on this panel, speaking to them all over. Um, my best guess is in the summer. And I think that, mm -hmm. you know, this springtime is kind of time for everyone to clean house and, mm -hmm. you know, get things organized. And I think this summer people are going to return. Um, and as it gets stronger, it will continue, hopefully. Um, that's my best guess. And, and I think, Jill, that's a useful perspective to, to, to comment that this is new territory for everybody. There's, this, this is not specifically um, a, a pandemic that um, is affecting a single group of people. Everybody is affected by this. And, and for us as humans to, to, to be able to, 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 to take different perspectives and then form our own opinion from experts such as you is, is useful. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Miami. Okay, let's go to Greenwich. Ellen, how are you doing in Greenwich now? Ellen from Julian Lawrence, Greenwich, Connecticut, number one agent recognized by the Wall Street Journal as one of the top 100 agents in the USA for seven years in a row. That's quite an accolade. Ellen, can you share your wisdom with our audience, please? Wisdom. Well, we've got a good powerhouse group of, of people helping us all understand this very complicated market. Uh, what we're seeing um, right now is a pause, as other people have said. People are, are spending a lot of time reviewing real estate online, uh, thinking about what their next move is going to be. 20% of the people who move to Greenwich are coming from New York City. So what we're seeing right now, and Deanna and I were talking about this last night, what we're seeing right now is a boom in the rental market in Greenwich. We are up, I think it's 130% from our rentals last year. It is, um, people have decided to step away from New York, a lot of them, and come and try Greenwich, Greenwich, Hamptons, you know, a variety of different towns. But what we're seeing is people are settling in here and saying, hey, you know, I, I thought I wanted to live in the city. Um, I maybe still want to live in the city, but maybe I want to have a country house as well. So they're kind of enjoying um, a lifestyle that they didn't expect um, to be moving to, maybe so quickly. They've accelerated their timeline. But what we're seeing in the Greenwich market is actually um, a little surprising compared to some of the other markets. Our, um, as of March 1st, our, our contracts, homes that went into contracts, are actually higher than they were last year. They're 8% higher. Our inventory's down. I think that's kind of a, a factor of the, the market that people don't want to put their houses on the market. But we're actually seeing people purchase homes through virtual tours. In Connecticut, we're seen as essential workers. Um, so we are actually allowed to show houses. So our market is still moving, not at the same pace as, as this time last year as far as amount of showings are going. And our inventory is down about 22% because people are waiting. But in Greenwich, we're seeing, we're seeing activity and movement. I mean, I can even tell um, by how many showings people are trying to set up. I would say 50% of our owners who have um, their homes on the market right now are willing to show them as long as people adhere to wearing masks, gloves, uh, booties. You know, we've got a protocol in place. So I think that people, I think that Greenwich is going to see in the next, I think it'll probably start churning a little bit more in the next two or three weeks. I think that we're going to see a, a, an uptick on this. You know, we're, we're a very special community. I mean, yesterday in Greenwich, there was a parade outside of Greenwich Hospital. 
uh, that were the healthcare workers um, creating uh, for the uh, firefighters and the first responders. And everybody has their flags out. I mean, it's, it's a very Norman Rockwell community. You really, you know, it's, it's 62,000 people living here, but it's everything from these fun little beach houses to, you know, our palatial estates. So I think um, I think that the market is going to I think that the market is going to fare well, and I think there's going to be great values because I think that people have already discounted their properties quite a bit, and I think that our buyers are going to recognize that. So, so I, I, I'm I'm so, hoping so the best for the market. So interesting. Thank you, Ellen. So what I hear is that um, buyers, sellers have already started to discount their properties and there's an interesting, um, there's an interesting uh, uh, take for people who are looking to rent properties in Greenwich. That's a, that, that's a buoyant market at the moment. Yes. And I, and I think it's similar to Tim. I mean, Tim and I have been talking through this whole, um, you know, this whole pandemic about, you know, there's such a demand for rentals in both of our markets. And unfortunately we can't even fill the needs mm -hmm. for all the people. Mm -hmm. uh, rentals, so, I think so, so that's my question. Sorry. So that's my question. What advice do you have for anybody with cash considering investing in Greenwich? What, what, what sort of properties would you suggest they invest in? Well, the majority of our properties. So as of March 1st, 20% um, of our inventory went to contract. And 90% of that was under 4 million. So we see this, we mm -hmm. see a, a good opening between one and 2 million for people to, if they have cash, come in and maybe, maybe keep their apartment in Manhattan and buy a country house or use it for an investment property. A lot of people buy investment properties for um, you know, all over town for their use, for you know, children's use. We have a lot of people who are buying smaller homes right now for, as investment properties and then saving them for their kids. Um, so it's, uh, I, think it's a, I think it's a good time if you have cash. And, and I'll tell you, sellers are paying attention to cash because in these uncertain times, sellers are very concerned about whether or not the contracts are going to actually happen. So I just had a deal that happened where um, they took a, a substantially lower offer. I think it was 8% lower than the highest offer because it was an all cash offer. And I think we'll be, I, I would imagine we're all gonna be seeing that kind of um, response from owners. Lovely, thank you. Thank you so much, Alan. Okay, so as we zip across now from Greenwich to LA, where's Jade? Hello, oh, hello, Jade. So Jade is our power broker from Coldwell Banker with over $5 billion in sales through her offices in Beverly Hills and all around Los Angeles. Now Jade has developed a reputation as the go-to luxury real estate agent for celebs, business leaders and tech founders. Jade, what do you know that people will be interested in about property? Please share. I'd love to. First of all, I think I can speak for all of us on the panel and our hearts go out to all the people who have been affected, not only with the virus, but the people who have lost their jobs. And many of the people in, in my little city in Beverly Hills who have been laid off, who can't work, the city employees. And I work from Los Feliz all the way to Malibu. So I have a very big area, but of course I live in Beverly Hills and Beverly Hills is really my specialty. So we, our little city has come together and we have tried to give money to the first responders. We've tried to help the people that are in need that have lost their jobs. But we still have a lot of people that are buying real estate and that are looking. We had a closing this week the asking price was $68 million and it was, it was a great sale. You know, it took a lot of finesse, finessing by all the agents to keep it together. But um, it was, a, it was a, a very good sale in a very good area of Bel Air. I think that people are definitely still out looking and buying. The first part of this year for us was amazing. I mean, it was really a great start. To 2020, and then about March 12th, you know, things started to to um, the stock market and the coronavirus, and it, it's definitely affected us. We still have people looking. I put something in escrow just last week. 
Um, and I think in Bel Air also, I think that that will close. Very good buyer, very good seller. But it's different. Of course, it's different because we can't show properties unless they're vacant. So it's definitely not the same. We've done a lot of 3D videos and we're working very hard to, to get people in to the vacant properties. But of course it hurts when you can't actually walk someone through a home where someone's living. So we're hoping that that will ease up soon. So we'll be able to wear our masks and gloves and booties and show those properties. But right now we can't. I still see people looking and as everybody has said, I think this is a home. I think that value, our values have, have stayed strong. Um, what Jill said about, you know, we have really realized that your home is where you want to be. In some ways, this is a reset. I think being with our families, being in, playing games and, and doing things that we haven't been doing, it's wonderful. I mean, if there is a silver lining, it's that we've been able to spend more time with our families and sort of had to push the reset button. And I think we'll all be ready to go back to work. And I know that I am, I am very ready to show properties, but it's been, it's been sort of a great little breather for all of us. Jade, are you able to share with us um through your wealth of experience, some of the best styles of homes um, that, that people in your market are most attracted to buying? Yes. Well, there's sort of a contemporary beachy barn house look that everybody is infatuated with right now. And I think it's, it's kind of also the contemporary, but I think that the traditional, the Spanish, um, will always be in vogue. But I think that as things come in and out, right now it's the big open spaces, the, the feeling of indoor-outdoor, and just I think it's more of a feeling of, of casual living more than the very formal living. Mm -hmm. So in the UK, for the last 15 years, I've hosted property shows and I've seen a lot of how not to market your homes. Um, can you share with us? I, I know so your, 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 um, your, your, your clients are celebs. Um, is there anything you're able to share with us? How not to market your home? <laughs> I've once seen... I've, I've once seen swords on the wall this guy loves you know like uh, what do, what is it called like archery or something a sword, sword fighting and he had swords over one wall no that's not gonna work that is not gonna work but let me say um my business is from my children's school parents to their children I am across the board and I know a lot of times people say you only work with people in this financial category or celebrities and that is absolutely not not true i mean i i am blessed to have many many fabulous clients but what not to do is clutter nobody wants to see and pardon my voice i'm i'm a little hoarse uh, but no one wants to see clutter and so the first thing we say is please if there are swords and and uh golf clubs attached to the wall and <laughs> all of these crazy things. Nobody wants to come in and see the way someone else lives. They want to go in and see a model home. So what we say is make your house as generic as you can and please take down as many personal pictures and personal items as you can so people can put themselves in your home because they want to walk in and buy a lifestyle. They don't want to buy someone else's lifestyle. Very good. Useful insight. Jade from LA, thank you so much. Okay, where are we hopping to now? Deanna in New York City. Welcome thank from you, the Corcoran Group. You're a leading agent in New York City with over $2 billion of sales in Manhattan. Over 35, you look very young, over 35 <laughs> years experience you are ranked in the top three brokers in sales volume welcome welcome thank you Diana. thank you, you thank you for having me thank you for having me well we have the dubious honor of being the epicenter in the 
in the world of uh, the coronavirus. Um, but we're not unused to being the epicenter of many of these events. I mean, obviously 9-11, Black Monday, when Lehman fell the financial crisis, you name it, we've been there and we've been at the center of it. And the good news about that is that we've been through it all and we've come out stronger than before. So mm -hmm. I feel very confident that that will be the case, even though everybody's very, very worried right now. And I'm not being Pollyanna, and I don't think it's gonna happen overnight, but New Yorkers are a certain breed. We like to pull ourselves up by the bootstraps and get mm -hmm. on with it. And that's what I feel will happen, but we just don't know how long it will take. It will take some time. Um, but mm -hmm. that said, um, we're kind of really, we're also really good after a period of time at letting these memories fade into oblivion. So mm -hmm. I, I sort of feel like right now we're in this moment and this moment I recognize because I've been through many of the crises as being a very uncertain time. And it will, as I say, continue until we have testing. We're gonna need a lot of testing. We're gonna need antibodies testing because in New York, unlike a lot of the other places, we are not all, but largely public transportation. We're very close together. So, and we had to stop showing apartments, I'd say about a month ago, uh, many of the buildings shut down, would not let anyone else, anyone in because of the terror of what was happening. And currently they're still shut down. We cannot show apartments. I mean, some people sneak out, but we're not supposed to be showing anything. Mm -hmm. um, many people did not do a lot of virtual tours and we can't sneak in to do them now. So it's a mm -hmm. difficult thing. And then, and just as uh, Jade said earlier, it's, it's a very different thing to see something virtually and walk through. Because when you walk through, you really feel the apartment or you feel the home. So it's, it's, it's a difficult thing. And in New York, and I don't know about the rest of the country, but in New York, we have to be present at each showing. And we do, we feel we make a difference, right? So we're not there, but we, we are also, if you, if you watch on the news, we're doing a lot of um, work, even the agents, Corcoran Cares, we're doing a lot of work trying to support those who have lost their jobs, those who are the healthcare workers. There's a clapping at 7 p.m. every night for the healthcare workers. It's a, it's a, it's a time when a lot of people do feel like we're coming together and trying to band together for our community. Um, but mm -hmm. I will say it is, it is difficult during this moment and it's understandable that it's difficult during this moment because mm -hmm. um, those who, I'm actually not in New York City, but those who stayed in New York City report lots of ambulances. I think that's slowing down. They report a lot of um, difficult times, but as I say, New Yorkers will get through this, and New York is a very unique city. There are a lot of challenges ahead. I don't want to uh, minimize that, but I do feel that, and I do feel that there are opportunities as well. And we did come out of what was a stronger market at the end of the year and the beginning of this year. We had a very strong market relative to previous times. And, and the hope is, is that we will you know, bounce back, whether it's a quarter, two quarters, three quarters, we will bounce back. Mm -hmm. and, and Deanna, it's interesting hearing um, from from you and 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 and, and your other peers um, how flexible you're having to be in this marketplace. What I hear is some of you are able to show properties, some of you are um, accessing properties via virtual methods, um, and some of you are not able to show properties at all. And and this mindset aspect um, is interesting. You were talking about. Um, um, the, 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 the way that the, uh, the New Yorker mindset um, and what I heard from you is you guys are resilient. Do you have any tips as a, as, as a power broker, how you wake up and you fill yourself with this flexible attitude to life and, and also this inner resilience you seem to, to possess? Well, I mean, I, <laughs> I work at it. I don't want to kid you. It's not, it doesn't always come so naturally. And I would say in speaking with my colleagues in the city, a lot of us were in a fog for the first, I don't know, two, three, four weeks. And many of us still are. And we go in and out of fog because it's, our, our livelihood is completely taken away from us. I mean, just to give mm -hmm. you an idea, and we're not alone, by the way, we're one of 
millions of people in the city that are, you know, really are not working any longer and we can't work. And our sales are down just to give you a sense, you know, above 4 million, which is a significant category. This week, there are no contract signs that are on the books. Last week and the week before, there were two each, whereas a year ago, there were a total of 44 over the past, uh, the first two weeks of April. Now we only have four. And those mainly were seen before the shutdown. Um, in terms of actual sales right now, um, on a, in a typical April, I wrote it down so I can tell you what the number is, we have around um, 244 sales a week. This, we do actually have 30 sales um, that went into contract this week, which is actually remarkable. I actually am negotiating something that I am going into contract on, but it was something that was seen before the shutdown. So mm -hmm. what I try to do though is, is wake up every morning and as I say, you cannot control, in our cases, we can't control the circumstances around us, what's happening, mm -hmm. but we can control our attitude and the way we look at things and the way we start, we, we come into this world. Mm -hmm. So I feel as though we all need to be there for each other and help each other and be inspirational to each other. And for me, it's critical because I could choose to be, there, there have been mornings I wake up and I'm not feeling great and mm -hmm. our livelihood is gone for the moment. But I just say, you know, if I go in that direction, then I don't help anyone. I don't help myself, I don't help my husband, I don't help my family. I have to keep mm -hmm. spirits up in order for us to help each other go mm -hmm. through this. Deanna, thank you. That was very, very useful, lovely. Okay, so from, I, I, are, you, are you warm in New York City? Because I think now we're gonna, we're, we're gonna pass through <laughs> The chilly and snowy Aspen. <laughs> See the wonderful Carrie Wells. Welcome, Aspen's top luxury real estate realtor. Sorry, with Coldwell Banker. Now, now, Carrie, you are rated nationally in the top one percent of real estate agents. So, so are there any opportunities, Carrie, in Aspen? Um, or, or is the, the horizon bleak as, as, as Fox News are repeatedly um, reiterating to us all? How's Aspen? Well, Aspen, we have a foot of new powder, as you might be able to see out the window. Um, our son went up to Aspen Mountain, he's skinning uphill, and then you take the skins off and he's skiing down. It's interesting timing when this crisis started for us in Aspen because we have two distinct selling seasons. We have our winter ski season, and then we have our summer selling season, and then we have off season months in between when it's more quiet. And mm -hmm. we, the governor uh, of Colorado, uh, by executive order, shut down all the ski resorts in the state on March 14th. And so March is one of our very busiest months with uh, for the restaurant owners, for the ski business, for real estate. And so we are in this protracted off season at the moment. Uh, we had, we were going into this crisis with really strong numbers. We saw an uptick in January of 23%. We, we saw February numbers at about 14%. Um, but we then everything, the pipeline of properties going under contract completely stopped for the most part. We are seeing certain properties going under contract, um, but many of those individuals, like my other panelists have mentioned, saw those properties before this crisis. Uh, mm -hmm. We certainly, like Tim mentioned, uh, Aspen has been a safe haven for many individuals. We saw this after 9-11. We saw this after Katrina, where people who've had second, third, or fourth, or fifth homes, you know, in, you know, in, in Aspen, they would retreat here and I predict that we will see the same when we come out of this. I think that so many people are realizing that they can work anywhere. They've experienced this now, being at home. Home is so important at the moment. And so I think we will see an uptick in activity because people are choosing to make decisions for health, safety for their family. Thank you, Carrie. Can you share? Can you share with our audience today, Carrie, um, something about um, your most desirable properties in Aspen? Give us a little bit of a flavour. I personally have never visited the area. 
Well, we have been seeing for the past few years uh, properties that are located close to the center of town where people don't need to rely on their cars to get everywhere. So you can mm -hmm. walk to the gondola, walk to restaurants and shops, and walk to some of the cultural amenities that we have, such as the Aspen Music Festival and School, the Aspen Institute. So areas such as the central core of Aspen, the West End, Red Mountain, things that are close have um, really been desirable. And that's where we see the most appreciation in our market. Mm -hmm. And I think people are, are really tired of uh, some of the lifestyle that we see in more dense urban areas or relying on cars and traffic. And so we, we've seen uh, those areas be very strong. Mm -hmm. Gary, you, you mentioned um, that, 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 um, that our, our world has experienced other um, devastating um, tragedies such as uh, Katrina and 9-11 and the property market has, um, has been affected by them and following these tragedies there's been a recovery period. Can you explain, um, can you share with our audience what sort of tips and, 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 and tools that, that, that you as a, as, a, as a property leader um, will, will, um, will inspire your, your teams to take hold of and, um, and, and include in your marketing or, or the way that you help your, 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 your property sellers? Well, about four years ago, I invested in a Matterport camera. And at the time, I thought, do I really want to spend this money doing this? And it has been helpful ever since then. And it's more important than ever now as buyers are looking online. We, I have an uptick in, in activity with uh, people visiting my website, Coal Banker's website, Realtor.com. And, and so having a virtual tour that people can walk through and experience a property is so important right now. We, we have tools such as videos, and uh, but there's nothing I think that is more helpful than having these three-dimensional tours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lovely. Okay, Carrie. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, I just want to interject um, because we are coming up to the question and answer session with our audience. And um, I just want to remind all of our participants, how many have we got now? We've got over 800 um, audience members um, who've joined our panelists today. Um, any questions uh, that anybody has? Oh, hello. Hello, Beverly Hills, Jade. Can I just interject something? Because, I mean, I think you can see from this panel how amazing my fellow panelists are. Now is the time that you need a professional in our field because we mm -hmm. can guide people through buying and selling. And we have been in this business, we've all been in this business for so many years. And what I'm seeing is people are calling me because they feel that I have the experience and I can guide them and I can help them. And a little bit of our business is being able to, to help people. I mean, buying their, their home is, is fabulous, but the experience of working with buyers and, <coughs> buyers and sellers is so important, especially in a market like this. Yeah, now's the time to hire an expert. Thank you, Jade. Any other comments from the panel before we go to questions? Okay, right, let's start. Bruce McKinney. Okay, I really appreciate Deanna's take on the market and her real and honest perspective. I believe it's critical to luxury agents that they don't sugarcoat or use confirmation bias to create a false narrative. Be honest and transparent. We don't know all the answers. We must keep updated and use the data to help guide buyers and sellers in an honest way. Who's up for being real and raw? <laughs> why not? <laughs> it, I mean, that's a New York characteristic also, so why not? No, I think, I think it is really important, and data will help us, you know, recover, get through this, because, I mean, just as data about where the disease is and what's happening with the disease, um, data about what the sales, what's happening with sales, and I know they'll come back, um, will help us get through this and get out of this place that we're in. Thanks, Diana. Okay, so Bibi Vladimova, um, what will be your advice for the new realtors to focus on right now? Who wants to answer that? 
Jade. <laughs> now is the best time to learn your market. Knowledge is king in any market. When you go on a listing appointment or when you have a client and you're taking them out to show real estate, knowledge is the most important thing. And now is your time for a new agent. Study the market. Know what everything in your market has sold for, who the last three or four owners of that property are. Know your market. And, and right now you have the time. So mm -hmm. learn your market and learn it backwards and forwards. So do your research. Thanks, Jade. Okay. Um, Marzena, excuse me for, for my pronunciation, Whiskins Q. Buyers feel the pandemic will cause prices to fall and there will be deals. More than 65% of wealthy, there will be a recession that will affect real estate prices. What's your insight on prices falling? Who'd like to answer that question for Marzena? I'll let Mark look at Ellen. No, you go ahead. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Oh, Tim. No, I, I, listen, I, I think that there will be opportunities. I, I don't view this as, as a, uh, you know, our next step being we're seeing a, a market crash in prices. We, our markets have remained stable throughout time. Uh, and, and we see growth in times when, when, uh, when, it's, when it's all good. Um, we have a limited market here and uh, our connection to the tri-state area and uh, access to this area globally continues to be what it is. And uh, it's also not a leveraged market. Um, most people buy their homes in cash at certain price levels. Uh, so I, I would say that uh, we don't expect that to happen in this market. Will there be buying opportunities? Of course, because there will be those who will come out of this uh, having to make decisions about which assets they want to continue to own. There are opportunities for, for, uh, for, for renting properties in this market that don't exist in other areas. So that can help someone carry a property during a time when, when, you know, when, when we have a pause like we have now. So at least for us, I, I feel very confident about our stability going forward. Thank you, Tim. Alan? And if I could add on to that, I think that what we probably are all seeing, and to Jade's point about, about um, working with experienced agents, people are looking um, in challenging times like this for a name brand, right? So they want a name brand community. They want dirt that is going to be valuable and stay valuable, and will be liquid in case they change their mind or are relocated. So I, I really believe that um, our markets will, I, I think our markets will thrive because people will want to purchase um, the best product that's out there. And I think that the markets we're all working in are, are, are strong. And, and in the end, if in, in our area, in Tim's area, my area, in Deanna's area, people are working in New York City. They can only go so far, right? So you don't really, most, most buyers really want to stay within an hour of New York City. And so I, I think that the Westchester market and especially the Greenwich market due to our low property taxes will always be seen. As a, mm -hmm. as a thriving market. So it's a value market. I'm sure we're all seeing the same thing. Buyers are driven by value. And a lot of our properties in Greenwich already have taken price reductions um, due to you know, a, a, a slight dip in our market last year. And so there's a lot of properties that are really primed to be, to be um, chosen. Mm -hmm. And there'll be a lot of new choice. Thank you, Ellen. Okay. Oh, Diana. You want to I comment? just going to say there are opportunities in New York. There have been. Um, our markets had dropped. And so right now, also, I think, I mean, the deal that I'm negotiating is about 10% off what it would have been just a month ago. So if someone's brave enough, and I had this happen after 9-11, I had someone buy after 9-11 and they got a good deal, relatively speaking. And now their property or even like 10 years later, their property was double. So the way that I see it is that there's some opportunities now if people are brave enough to do it, to, mm -hmm. to make the offer, to go into contract. But it is, you know, it's an uncertain time. So people just are a little bit nervous and I understand that. But um, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a time to look at things with that in mind for certain mm -hmm. in New York. Okay, case. a question from Alberto Marinas. What percentage of homes have been sold with virtual tours and do you see a trend? 
Who would like to answer that? Jill, Carrie? Jill. So, you know what? We've been doing, um, much like Carrie said, we've been doing Matterport and Zoom and um, like everyone here, making videos and using drones all along, you know, for years. So right now we're, you know, daily uplifting those because we're not able to go in the homes very much like Aspen or some of the other cities. So we put those up and we actually sold a property this week. I mean, the gentleman knew the area, but he didn't know the house. And he went on his own with his family by boat and looked at the back of it. And we were able to give him all the pictures, all, you know, go through the whole property. And he really understood it and, and made the deal with the technology. I think technology, even for me, I'm not as versed in it as a lot of people on my staff are, or the marketing people are. And we're all learning to do it, even this meeting today. We're all very comfortable doing this because we've been doing it now. And I think that an amazing silver lining that's happening is everyone's realizing how beneficial all this technology is. And it's not just a pretty thing that you add on or a pretty thing that you do. It's real and it's needed. And people are using it in business now. I mean, I think the, the world's going to change a lot in this way. You know, are there, is it necessary for people to fly to each place to have meetings? No, you could be very efficient on Zoom. And we just did a closing that had went into contract before, but it was very complicated now because the people were in Europe. They couldn't come here. The house had to move. And everything was done paperless. And you're able to do that now. The efficiency is incredible that is developing and being used in the marketplace as not just a special moment in time, but as a course of doing business. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Carrie? I think that it is uh, very individualistic. For instance, I am putting something under contract today that was a virtual showing. And it was, I represent the buyer, and this buyer had a property in the Aspen area 12 years ago. So he was familiar with the neighborhood he's buying, and uh, I was able, it's a brand new house, so it was vacant, so I was able to go in by myself and FaceTime him as we walked around the property. And so I think that if somebody has the knowledge and the comfort level, we will see those occasional properties go under contract sight unseen. Mm, lovely. Thank you, Jade. I had a similar thing happen last week. We sent a virtual tour. They are actually in Miami with Jill right now, but um, they want to buy their first home and we sent them a 3D tour and she sent her girlfriend over who was in LA to, to see the house. And I think that they will make an offer. They too, as Carrie said, they're familiar with the area. Um, they are familiar even with the street, but she just wanted her girlfriend to go see it in person, but she has never seen it in person. She has only <laughs> seen it on a, on a 3D tour. Okay, so, so, so thank you, Jade. So next question is about financing. Have financing inquiries, finance deal, deals increased due to the desire of keeping more liquid assets and the lower interest rates? Who wants to answer this one? Have financing inquiries, financed deals increased due to the desire of keeping more liquid assets and the lower interest rates? Is it too early to give an answer to that, Jade? I think it's a little bit early to answer that, but what I'm seeing is, um, of course, cash is king, as everyone has said, and people who are more likely to take a cash offer, but the interest rates are so low that many, many people are, of course, refinancing. The lenders are overwhelmed. Um, and, and a few people that have talked about buying have definitely said, I want to get my financing in order because the rates are low. But we just need to inform our sellers that it's not going to be a 30-day escrow because mm -hmm. the loans are taking longer. So that is something that we need our sellers to be aware of. It's probably not going to be a 21-day contingency period for the loan. It, it's going to be a, a, a little bit longer process. Okay. Thank you. Carrie? In the state of Colorado, we have appraisers and title companies that are an essential business. And so we're seeing very interesting trends also with appraisers who are doing drive-by appraisals 
if the house is vacant, they can get in. If not, they are FaceTiming with either a broker or the owner. And I think that, again, as my other panelists have said, we're going to see so many positive outcomes from this crisis, such as remote online notary. Today I have a closing, and the seller is in Sag Harbor, and they had a mobile notary go to her house yesterday to sign documents. We're having title companies who are doing curbside closings. We have uh, our county clerk and recorder is working at home, and so we now have electronic uh, recordation of, of documents. So it's just interesting what we'll see as we come out of this. Mm. Okay, Ellen? I think it's now is a great time for buyers to spend time getting teed up and ready with their pre-approvals. You know, we see this a lot where people will come to Greenwich to look at homes and they haven't completed their pre-approval process. And I believe that now's a great time to do it. I mean, why, you know, your home, you have all your records in front of you. Right. And um, so I think prepping, I mean, sellers should be prepping them for their homes in case they're going to be coming on the market in the next couple of months. Buyers should be, you know, organizing their finances. It's a good time. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ellen. Okay, we have um, a question from London, Andre Kappelhoff. With the US being badly hit by corona and unemployment levels are exceeding 20 million, are you expecting a wave of real estate owners needing to sell their luxury homes? And who do you think is likely to snap up real estate, bearing in mind the threat of global recession? Who wants to answer that? So we have unemployment levels rising. Do you anticipate there's going to be new stock on the market, Jade? Well, I, I feel because of the stock market, people always will go from stock market to real estate. I bought my first mm -hmm. home for $22,000 in Beverly Hills Post Office. It sold last for a million nine. Many, many, many people have made their fortunes <clears throat> in real estate. So I mm -hmm. feel that this is a great time to buy real estate in a great time to take money that you're afraid to put into the stock market into real estate. And I, I feel that it, it is always a great opportunity to buy real estate because we've seen that real estate in downtown Los Angeles, you used to be able to buy a block for three or $4 million. Those blocks are now 70 million. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's just real estate it has such a huge upside. And I think that people will be taking a lot of their money out of the stock market and putting it into real estate. Yeah, I Deanna? too. I too have bought. I've I've happened to have bought just the month before Black Monday. I bought something that I had actually gone into contract um, right around nine eleven, and everything that I bought, um, mm -hmm. I was able to renegotiate after nine eleven. But everything I bought mm -hmm. has now many years later increased dramatically in value. So there are definitely opportunities and even with unemployment and there's going to be a few people who are going to be desperate about selling, there's no question about it. But there's mm -hmm. still a market there. There's a buyer pool there for good property. And as I say, mm -hmm. our values have already gone down. So I think there may be another round of some diminution of value, but it, again, it's too early to tell, but I don't think it's gonna be falling through the floor. But whatever you get at this point in time, I think if you hold on to it for a few years, mm -hmm. you will definitely mm -hmm. make money. Mm -hmm. Tim? Yeah, you know, I think what we're experiencing and what we're hearing right now, we need to be very careful not to knee-jerk react to it in, in spite of those who are going through very extreme times. Um, you know, it's, and it's difficult to take a pause and, and to think beyond what we're living through right now. But history shows us uh, that, that we are resilient as human beings and that we'll get through this. And beyond this will be a time where, where we, can, we can stop and, and think about the decisions that, that are very important to our lives and making the right decisions, whether it's the financial markets or it's real estate or other, you know, other aspects of our life. Uh, and I think that's dif it's difficult for young people to understand that. Um, you know, we, we are part of what we, we offer in this group is, and we've talked about, we've touched on this, is the experience that we have amongst us 
We've lived mm -hmm. through these times mm -hmm. and uh, we've, we've come through the other side of it. And at the, you know, at the end, we are still in, you know, the strongest real estate markets in the country and in the world. And uh, it will continue to be that way. So mm -hmm. I, I would say pause and don't make rash decisions. There will be mm -hmm. opportunities, those who will have to do something, but uh, you know, remember that we'll get through this. Mm, sound advice. Jill. Hi, I raised my hand. I just wanna say that you know, the point is, is that before this happened, you have to look at and analyze, was it directly related to the real estate market? And it wasn't. It had nothing to do with the real estate market. It wasn't the banking or the mortgages were being done wrong or all those things that happened previously when the market crashed. This is not, this is a pandemic. This is a virus that everyone's very, very much aware of and it's global. So it's not just one city's problems and now are you gonna take care of those problems? So I think that real estate will still be real estate. Those homes, those waterfront properties we have on Miami Beach or the, all the stellar properties that everyone has are still there. People will still want them. And it will, you know, maybe it will take a little time to percolate again and start up. But it, it was a healthy real estate market and the housing market is still in demand. So, you know, what the prices will be when it comes back and as it moves along, everyone's saying real estate's always been a very good investment along with stocks. And right now, I guess people are wondering, maybe I want to put it in brick and mortar more than a stock. Mm -hmm. Okay. One final question before we reluctantly close this down. Lisa Wiseman, how do I convey confidence to my very anxious seller clients who have their homes in the pipeline and sure of when we'll be able to sell? Who'd like to help with their confidence? How do I convey confidence to my anxious seller clients? Jade. Well, I think that we really need to stay positive and we all know this too will pass. So I think we just need to be positive about the future. No one knows and no one can, can tell a client this is going to be over next month or in six weeks. But I think we can say that this, this will pass. And real estate, as we've been talking about, it is where so many people want to put their money. As Jill said, this people are buying a home, a place that they love, a place to live. So when we talk about maybe there are going to be some, some good buys, um, everybody wants a good buy, but when you're buying a home for long term, you wanna buy something that you love and maybe you're gonna pay retail, maybe you're gonna pay market value because it's where you're going to live with your family and enjoy your life. So I think the confidence that we need to give people this is going to pass and it might take a little time, but you're there for them. And, mm -hmm. and I think that that's the biggest thing they want to hear. You're, you are there for them. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jade. Any final comments before we close, unfortunately close this panel down. Okay. I want to thank my esteemed panelists for an informative, uplifting commentary <laughs> of the property market. Um, these are very uncertain times for many people and, and, and thank you all and to our wonderful worldwide audience of which there have been hundreds today. I just want to remind you if you want to continue with today's conversation and with our panelists, please hashtag all your social media with luxury real estate check in. Now to everyone who has registered today, you'll be receiving a follow up email with a link and copy of today's webinar. So if you've missed anything, you can follow up that, that way today. Um, okay, so guys, thank you for shedding your, sharing your insights and some positivity in, in what are these you know, uncertain and unsettling times. Be well, be safe, and take care. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.